I like to preface my budget proposal, just a few thoughts. Uh, I went into teaching to inspire learning in students, to inspire them to learn and achieve at a level they didn't think they were even capable of. I went into administration so that I could build programs, inspire teachers, and help them to grow from new teachers to master teachers and to build programs that would help support students. And I went into the superintendency so that I could do the same thing at the district level and also represent the voices of the teachers and the voices of the administrators as we build and improve our district systematically from year to year. I can only speak for myself, but I know you all feel the same way as to why you do what you do. Um, these past uh, two weeks in particular, but the past couple of months have been extremely difficult and extremely stressful on me to do these things, to recommend these things that are counter to everything that led me into the career that I'm in. And I know it's been equally as difficult on our principals, on our teachers, and also as you at school committee members. So absolutely nobody looks forward to a budget cut and is proud to present uh, a budget like this with so many cuts and reductions. With that, uh, we present to you tonight our latest version uh, that we've redrafted this afternoon uh, as we continue as a team to work at the details of our budget. And I'd like to talk you through it uh, tonight. Uh, starting with uh, the top, you can see the appropriations amount that hasn't changed very much, the $27,804,000. Our budget needs or increases have been adjusted. And so what was, as uh, Mr. Ball just pointed out, 1.4, we now have scaled back to a $1.275 million uh, budget gap. That again, the largest part of that is our collective bargaining agreement, our current collective bargaining agreement with teachers and the anticipated collective bargaining agreement that we will enter into negotiations shortly. The teacher lane changes as teachers earn higher degrees and move over to higher salaries. We need to increase our support for special education so we can do just what was recommended tonight, build stronger programs, build more support into our special education to support student learning and to keep our program strong so the students remain in our school system and that also we can invite kids back to our school system so we're not paying the out of district costs. Uh, in a, a previous version that was 250000 we were asking for and now with the new streamlined budget that we put together we're looking for only an additional 50000 to support special education. You see the cost for negotiations, the legal fees, the athletics and food service offset because they are mostly self-supporting uh, but we'll need some additional money to close that gap. Uh, though I have this $5,000 on here for the AP Biology books, which the high school doesn't have the textbook uh, funds uh, to purchase, I have heard uh, that there is a private donor who may be offering to purchase those books for us, and I've invited that person to come and, and meet with me, but we haven't uh, connected yet. So that remains on there. Uh, the Medicaid funding levels have been reduced by 35000 and our school choice uh, money, the staff and expenses that are not able to be funded through school choice as we thought they would be, it leaves us with a $300,000 gap there going forward to next year. So how do I propose uh, better, how do we propose? This is a team effort done with our administrative leadership team who I know they work with their school councils and their faculty um, and then with uh, Mr. McLaughlin and myself. We are working on this every single day. We draft, redraft, re-add, subtract, <coughs> calculate every single day to put together the most responsible budget we can put forward because our budget has to be balanced. I can't propose a budget that is above what our allocation is. District-wide, you've heard us talk about this. Um, if we were to reduce busing to only the state-mandated K through 6, um, we could save $100,000. Now, the question has come, well, it's pretty tough to cut it off at sixth grade knowing that the seventh grade and eighth graders would not be able to take the bus to school. If we were to create a two-tier system that would provide transportation K through eight, we would have a result in savings of about $50,000. So we took the more conservative approach for the purposes of building this budget 
and put the K6, but I wanted you to know that if that's up for discussion and you want to consider us going in another direction, we have calculated that out. Uh, some other highlights here then that I need to point out the third line down. If we were to reduce all staff, K-12, that's all staff, faculty, administrators, clerical, custodians, um, everyone have one furlough day, it would be a savings of $105,000. Now, we can say that's what we'd like to do, but of course the teachers union would have to vote that approval. So we put that in there and uh, I'm sorry that I forgot to mention Sharon Carlson, who's been developing this budget with us every day. Um, uh, she's been sitting with us. She's been in these talks. It's not a surprise to her. And uh, that is something that we're putting on the table. If you're willing to accept it, we would take it to the union membership and ask them if they would like to approve that. Knowing that that's the cost of a furlough for one day, I only put in one day. And then I don't know if two or three days is something that the union membership would accept or something that you wanted to discuss, but I thought it was important to point that out. I believe it was three years ago, uh, the union accepted a furlough day and it was different per unit. Um, some of you probably remember that. One unit was one day, another unit was three days. That's very complicated. I'm not recommending that we do that. I also think it's divisive. And so if we're going to talk about a furlough, we're going to talk about it from e for everybody uh, through the whole system, superintendent, through every person here. Uh, food service lunch price increase. You've heard us talk about the additional revenue we're looking for there, and I wanted to be specific. We're talking about a lunch price increase from $2.50 to $2.75. The athletic fee price increase would be $150 per sport, going up to $175 per sport. Uh, I thought that it was an important to give you the details on that. Looking further down, this one is up for debate, the reduction of the Director of Academic Effectiveness and Grants Management. You heard the recommendation tonight. You know that that's a challenge for our district and something that we, we desperately need. In discussions with the all team today, this was not a unanimous decision to put this on here. Um, there are people who feel that this position should be cut completely. Uh, I think that it's important to have at least a 0.5. I do think that we weren't getting enough, gaining enough ground with the 1.0, and so I'd really like us to have a full time, but in an effort to meet a responsible budget, I put a 0.5 position there. Uh, for that would be curriculum leadership, working with the new teacher mentor program, and managing the grants. Uh, we talked about custodial positions, and this one, too, is controversial, like everything on this list. If we were to close the JFK building on weekends, that is a .5 custodial position. That is a huge impact for those of you who have ever been to JFK on a weekend. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of people here on a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, throughout, the, throughout the seasons, in the winter, in the summer, there's more, of course, with the soccer and the tennis going on. Um, but that's not our classroom and that's not our school day and that's where we were making our value decisions on what is best for our students in the classroom. So could I just ask you, would that, how would that, um, is that something you've coordinated with the recreation department about? Or um, I won't say coordinated, we've informed them and they're okay. not excited about that. And I don't blame them. Yeah, it's well a big it's, part of their program. It certainly will have an effect on their uh, programming and revenue. Mean that the pool would be closed on the weekend. Yes. Okay. Yep. Because we have to pay a custodian um, to be here to keep the building open. Have they offered to pay a custodian? I um, mean, did they suggest at point, that at all? Not at this point, okay. no. And in addition to that, uh, we were looking at one full position in the custodial department. And so in addition to that, there'd be another 0.5, uh, which if you look at district-wide, the lowest um, custodian with seniority, the lowest seniority custodian would be the one that would have the 0.5 reduction in it as it happens, that would be uh, out at Ryan Road. So that's mentioned down here under Ryan Road, but we put a zero there um, because the cost was figured up here, but we wanted you to see the impact would be down there. That's the district-wide total, $344,000 of reductions. Um, I'm sorry, I need to point out one other position there, and that is the reduction of the 0.5 uh, secretarial position in special education and the school committee clerk, we would try to blend those 
two positions, and uh, that would coincide with the departure of Annie Thompson, so we would fill that position with someone from the inside. Yeah. Are you going to try to have us digest it all, or would you, uh, do you want to do a total presentation? I would question? prefer to talk you through the whole thing, as heavy and hard as that may be, but I certainly am willing to stop at each section and talk about it if you prefer. I would just ask a couple of questions at the district wide, uh, and, uh, because they may not, we may not come back to them uh, later. One question had to do in regards to the furlough day. Um, that day would come off of a um, a professional development day, a non-contact day with students. That's Correct? a great question. Right, we have 180 school days and our calendar has 185 days in it. Five days are for preparation and professional development. So we would take one of those extra five away. I think that's important that the community yeah. knows that if we were going to uh, yeah. entertain something like that, it wouldn't impact student learning and contact things right. with, with students. The, the other thing I wanted to uh, just ask in regards to the athletic fee price increase from the 150 to 175, we currently have a uh, staggered price for um, for athletic fees and so we're moving the the full paying student from 150 to 170 would the tiers move up a little bit as well so if a student plays a second sport or a second student right. the family is playing sport. right except the family maximum we were not going to increase okay. yep. thank you good questions yeah the question um, regarding the Budget needs or increases. Is there um, are all these numbers fairly firm? Are any of them ones that have any room for I don't know what Wait adjustment? Or are they all just pretty much like what we have? To do? Uh, the, I, as much as we've been through this at this point, these are pretty firm. I mean, yeah. like the one that sort of jumped out of here was the legal negotiation. Mm. Seventy-five thousand. That's a lot mm. of money. It is, and that is what we would put in there on retainer. Oh, so we may not spend it? We may not spend it, it. right. But it all depends how many hours and how lengthy our negotiations process is going to be. And then, um, just like Ed, cause we were, we, when we were looking at the athletic fees a year or two ago, mm. I, it seemed we, I think we had come around to if we were going to do an increase in the fees, it seemed like the fairest way in terms of spreading it out and not sort of penalizing one group or another was simply to increase every amount by $10. So the people who currently pay nothing pay $10. Mm -hmm. People who pay, currently pay, uh, I forget mm -hmm. what the reduced rate was, but it was something like $35, pay $45 mm -hmm. and so on. Rather than having the people who pay nothing continue to pay nothing and people who pay 150 having to pay 175. Right. It, seemed, it seemed like it, would raise, it raised a similar amount of revenue, um, but it seemed like it spread it out mm -hmm. sort of more fairly. I have to, uh, Mark worked, uh, Mr. McLaughlin worked on this with Jim Miller, so I have to ask him if that was factored in to it your was. discussion. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, looking at the elementary schools, and you can see that it's uh, divided unfairly because keep in mind that our uh, enrollment is quite different. Uh, Jackson and Lee are our largest schools and therefore the place where in times like this where we're crunching things you have the economy of size that you can make more reductions as unpalatable as they are um, and the smaller schools where you only have 12 or 13 people on the entire staff are not a place where I can make equal cuts. So that may be a comment that someone will make is why aren't they equal and, and that's the reason why. Uh, Jackson Street, we are talking about the elimination of one full-time fourth grade teacher and reducing one of the third grade teachers to a point five. Uh, we want to increase in special education, the ASD program, the alternative learning program teacher. Again, we want to do that and you'll see that throughout where we're, where we're increasing, we're trying to strengthen our special education programs which have an overall savings. So though it's spending a little money now, it has uh, a direct impact on our savings in out-of-district and um, consultant costs. 
Um, the occupational therapist at Jackson Street, that's what the COTA is. That's uh, one elimination. And then increase um, an FT to the occupational therapist uh, to 0.8. And that offsets the services uh, for occupational therapy. Also, we would be eliminating the ETL, the team leader, the elementary team leader in special education at 0.6, and that's being eliminated across all of the elementary schools and the central office um, director of special education as well as the um, supervisor of special education will be working with the teacher leaders in the schools to pick up those responsibilities. The Jackson Street total, as you can see, there is $98,900. Over at Ryan Road, where we have. Has a oh, sorry. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry to be dense, but what does a half-time teacher do? <laughs> when you you said you were reducing the third grade to 0.5. Gwen's still here. <laughs> Gwen, would you like to respond to that? I'm sure there's a good answer, but there is a good it, answer. But it, it doesn't. Gwen's look, better at the answer. But on that. paper, it <laughs> seems a little yeah. odd. Yeah, we won't have one section of third grade being half a day. So. Okay. <laughs> In order to accomplish what I was asked to cut, I collapsed two grades, the kids that are going into fourth grade and the kids that are going into fifth grade. But I really only, only had to cut the equivalent of a 1.5 teacher. So if I'm hoping that I can hire a 0.5 teacher who will be able to support the core subjects for fourth and fifth grades that are collapsed and much bigger now. Do you mean a combination class, fourth, fifth? By picking three sections and turning them okay. into two sections. There are three right. third grades that will be two fourths. There are three fourths that will be two fifths. Wow. And then the halftime teacher will help give academic support to those now larger classes. Walmart. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Mm. Are, those, sorry, are those the ones that are going to be like 27 kids? Is yes. That's that's we took our lowest grade level in enrollment, uh -huh. and so that yeah, would be 27 and 28 um, for those sections. Uh, over at Ryan Road, um, where we don't have the level of personnel to be able to collapse classes. If you were to do that, the classes would be up over 30 and into the 40s. Um, so the, the sacrifices they can make is reduce professional conferences. Therefore, you reduce the substitutes needed for professional conferences. Um, reduce a PE teacher from full time to 0.8. Reduce the clerical overtime. Eliminate the 0.5 special education team leader, as I mentioned. And this is where the impact of the custodian would be, and Ryan Road would have a reduction of $45,200. Over at Leeds School, um, we would eliminate the full time library media position. We would eliminate one full time fourth grade teacher. Again, by taking three sections and combining them to make two. We would eliminate a uh, special education teacher uh, in the DEP program. We would eliminate the 0.5 ETL. We reduce speech and language, um, I'm sorry, the psychologist. And we would then increase, there are two people there, so we reduce a 0.2 and we increase another one, 0.6 to 0.7, in order to combine those services. The leads um, reduction comes to $200,290. Over at Bridge Street School, uh, again a smaller school, we would reduce the front office secretary, we reduce professional conferences, we would reduce um, 1.0 special education teacher, we would reduce a second special education teacher from 1.0 to down to 0.4, that's a 0.6 cut. We would then increase uh, 0.6 SLP that is a different teacher um, who is part-time would then become would have a greater portion of a position and we would increase a full-time uh, teaching assistant at Bridge. Uh, we would reduce the psychologist from 0.7 to 0.6 and we would reduce pre-k and kindergarten teacher from 1.0 down to 0.5. Then the bridge reduction would be $82,300. Doesn't get better when you turn the page. Uh, we go to the middle school and the high school, which uh, because of their size and enrollment are suffering the largest cuts of this budget process. 
At the middle school, we would eliminate a full-time world language teacher, a full-time general music teacher, a full-time math interventionist, and a full-time in-school suspension supervisor. We would reduce an art teaching position by 0.4. We reduce an English teaching position by 0.2. We reduce uh, the FTEs, uh, uh, two people combined of 1.2 down to 1.0 in special education. We reduce the psychologist, which it says psych teacher. That means psychologist who's on a teacher pay scale. Um, we would reduce life skills staff and transfer that teacher. Uh, we would reduce an FTE in special education, um, the ESP support, and eliminating busing, even though that's counted up further. The impact is here at the middle school and, as you can see, at the bottom in the high school. So a, a decrease in services to those two buildings. And the JFK cut is $258,500. Over at Northampton High School, the result would be an elimination of a 0.5 technology curriculum teacher. Uh, the elimination of a full-time art teacher, reduction in technology video and photo from a full-time teacher down to 34%, reduction of the band teacher from 83% to 34%, reduction in the, to the chorus teacher of 67% down to 34%, the theater teacher from full-time down to 67%, reduction in consumer science from 67% to 34%, reduction in tech engineering, that's our STEM class, uh, full-time down to 83%, and reducing a second art teacher from 83% to 67%. We would eliminate cheerleading, which cuts out the coaching stipend, we eliminate school supplies. Um, if you're eliminating all <coughs> consumer science, tech ed, art, there's a lot of materials and supplies that the teachers use. And so you would reduce those supply budgets for those teachers. That would be a savings of almost $30,000. We currently allow students to do dual enrollment at community colleges through school choice. And uh, that would, we would end that program. Uh, that's, we spend up to $5,500 in shared tuition. We would need to, again, the, some of the increases at the high school to bring more people in, more students in. Strengthening our programs, we'd increase uh, the school psychologist by 10%. We would increase one of the special ed teachers uh, by 20%. We would eliminate one of the special ed teachers by 4%. We would increase another psychologist by 0.2. We would increase our life skills teaching from 1.0 position to 1.5 position. We would increase um, a special education teacher for learning disabilities from 67% to full time. We would increase our support to ELL. Once again, you heard that tonight as a recommendation and uh, we'd be able to increase that from a 25% position to a half time position. We would reduce special education teacher by 34%, and again, we would eliminate busing. The cuts to the high school total, $223,200. This gives us a subtotal of $1.252 million, and given what we need to cut, we are still short by $22,000. So, again, even if we do all of this, we're still not quite to the budget gap that we need to cover. We're continue to work on it. And I want, you know, as we've said in the paper, it's the financial equivalent of about 27, uh, 27 uh, full-time teaching positions. The actual teaching positions, if you add up all these percentages, um, would be 23.5 teaching positions. And then the additional amount of money is made up in other ways, as you can see here. Now I'll pause for questions and comments.